Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss some of the more recent discoveries about the mysterious Titan. The largest moon of Saturn, and the only place except for planet Earth that has an established liquid cycle, relatively thick atmosphere, and even things like rivers, lakes, and tiny seas on its surface. But because it's also super cold here, none of this is water. All of this seems to be a bunch of hydrocarbons, such as methane and ethane, and the surface here is not really terrestrial and is not made out of silicates like on Earth, it's made out of water ice. But also not exactly the same water ice as on Earth either. And you can learn about these bizarre types of ices in some of the previous videos in the description. But much more importantly, exactly 20 years ago from when I'm making this video, in January of 2005, NASA's Cassini spacecraft launched its probe known as Huygens. And this was the first ever probe to land in the outer solar system on any object. And it didn't just land there, it observed everything as it was descending for two and a half hours, and it even took certain images as soon as it landed on Titan, making this a historical mission and making January of 2025 a somewhat important anniversary. But the thing is, the way this probe operated, by using different types of radars to observe the surface and to calculate the descent, produced so much data that even today not all of this has been analyzed yet. And so in one of the recent studies, researchers actually used some of this data to discover something else incredible about Titan, and something that even though we kind of suspected, was now officially confirmed. And so let's actually discuss some of these new discoveries and some of these new announcements. But I guess first, let's start with these images from Titan that back in 2005, I guess kind of blew everyone's minds. So right here, we see the landing. An actual physical objects. But these rocks, as mentioned, are not actually rocks. These are chunks of ice. And intriguingly, as soon as the probe landed, it used this gas chromatographer and mass spectrometer, part of its surface science package, to provide direct evidence for the presence of methane and ethane on the surface of Titan. But more intriguingly, methane rain and lakes of what seem to be ethane. Now on Earth, both methane and ethane mostly exist as gases. But for decades, scientists speculated that objects like Titan potentially contain methane and ethane as liquids as well because of really cold conditions and because of potentially high pressure. And so the Huygens probe was the first to provide physical evidence, with the additional observations and images revealing various Earth-like features including various canals, what seem to be lakes, islands inside those lakes, and even rivers. But surprisingly enough, when Huygens landed, and it seems to have landed very close to some kind of a river, for some reason here, the rivers and lakes appeared dry. Yet the evidence for the flow was still there. And so this obviously suggested a cycle, but a cycle that we didn't really understand. But all of these radar observations and radar experiments, turns out, were actually hiding quite a lot of intriguing data that was just recently analyzed, and described in this paper by Valerio Puggiali and his team, focusing on what's known as bistatic radar experiments. And here, these bistatic experiments relied on a very intriguing feature. As the Huygens probe was landing, it was basically emitting radar pulses toward the surface in order to scan the features underneath. But some of these reflections then made it back to the Cassini orbiter, providing additional information, especially polarization. And that's because when these waves reflect from the surface, they do get polarized just a little bit, depending on the type of a molecule they strike. So basically here, this provided information on what sort of features were seen on the surface and even their texture. All this data was super complex, so it did require some really complex analysis tools to finally make sense of it. And so this technique is sensitive to both the surface composition and to also surface roughness. And then by analyzing all of this data, focusing on various locations including very large seas such as Kraken Mare, Laigeia Mare, and Punga Mare, scientists meet a somewhat unusual discovery. Discovery in regards to both composition and the texture of a lot of these liquid bodies. So first of all, all of these are hydrocarbon seas. But turns out that they actually have different composition depending on the latitude and the location on Titan. For example, those near rivers, as opposed to those that are somewhat isolated, or those in polar regions, as opposed to those closer to the equator. For example, here is a previous image of what's known as Kraken Mare, the largest known hydrocarbon sea on the surface of Titan, naturally named after the mythological Kraken. And here the observations discovered 
the highest dielectric constant, which measures the ability of certain materials to reflect radio signals. Now in contrast, things like water tend to be super reflective. Water has the dielectric constant of 80. Although it does actually drop a lot, once water starts warming up and becomes 55 as it reaches the boiling point, which is actually one of the ways we can measure temperature of water from outer space. In contrast, something like quartz or silicon dioxide, which is very often present on the surface, has the constant of 3.9, so obviously much, much lower. Here though, it was discovered to be 1.7, suggesting that these ethane and methane seas of Titan barely reflect any radio signals, which is also why on many images they often appear as these very dark objects. That's because radio emissions that were used to scan this make them appear very dark. You can actually check out some of the other materials and some of the other constants in one of the tables in the description. But the much more important discovery was that this dielectric constant was actually different depending on the lake and depending on the sea, which implied different liquid compositions that seem to be directly affected by various nearby objects, specifically rivers. In other words, this showed us a kind of a methane-ethane mixing ratio. Some of these objects contained more methane and some of them contained more ethane, and this actually seemed to be compatible with previous propositions that a lot of rivers on Titan are methane-rich, and so if some kind of a lake was also connected to rivers, it was more likely to contain more methane in comparison to something else that was more or less landlocked. But here, even stranger, was the analysis of the surface texture, or basically the surface roughness. Unlike planet Earth, where any lake and any river is going to have a little bit of turbulence on the surface, and obviously a little bit of texture, which we usually call waves, bizarrely enough, all of the lakes and all of the rivers here were basically almost entirely smooth. For example, all three major seas were so calm that their surface waves here were no larger than 3.3 millimeters. For my American friends, basically this small. With only coastal areas having slightly higher waves of 5.2 millimeters. This small. And that's actually super bizarre. It basically suggests that maybe there's no winds here, or the winds are just super weak, or the formation of waves on ethane and methane oceans is just very different. But since there's no waves, it's quite unlikely that we're also going to have any erosion or any beaches, so don't expect to go surfing on Titan anytime soon. But just the fact that we now have evidence that rivers seem to feed pure methane into these lakes and these seas, with these lakes and seas mostly being ethane rich by default, is actually super important. This is a really important piece of evidence and a very important discovery, even though technically this was actually assumed even before and hypothesized in previous papers. But having this physical evidence is of course super important. And in some sense, this is actually something that mimics planet Earth. Here, we also have mixing of water when rivers meet the ocean, although for us it's usually mixing of fresh water and salty water. Not mixing of two completely different substances with two completely different molecular formula. But this potentially gives us a little bit more clue to how this unusual liquid cycle works on this bizarre moon. Here we can now almost certainly say that the rain that falls from the skies seems to be pure methane with maybe some trace signs of some other hydrocarbons. And it then mixes with a bunch of ethanes that seem to flow all over the place, but that don't actually seem to evaporate as easily, probably because the molecule itself is much heavier. Methane is one carbon and four hydrogens, ethane is two carbon and six hydrogens. So it would be a little bit more difficult for ethane to evaporate. Which leads us to the next discovery and the next important clue. We know that methane also represents 5% of the entire atmosphere, but 95% of this atmosphere is nitrogen. Now, the origin of nitrogen is still not entirely clear. As a matter of fact, it's the same for planet Earth, where we do have a nitrogen-rich atmosphere whose origin is still unknown. But here we can now explain the origin of methane and even make very important conclusions about the origin of the entire atmosphere. And that's because normally, we know that methane doesn't really survive in the atmosphere for too long. The sun usually breaks it apart really quickly, and it also tends to freeze on the surface, very often forming all sorts of organic compounds in the process. And so technically, after just 30 million years, there really should be no methane anywhere on Titan. Yet because there is so much methane in the atmosphere, something must be replenishing it. And specifically, large amounts of methane very likely come from within Titan, seeping out at the surface where it eventually forms the thick atmosphere around the moon. 
and it's actually quite likely that this is where nitrogen comes from as well. And so, in a separate study, Miller and his team conducted a very intriguing experiment. They essentially recreated the internal structure of Titan. And so, by mimicking what's inside this unusual moon, they realized that under certain pressures and under certain temperatures, nitrogen and methane start to bubble out and quite likely then end up on the surface as the atmosphere. Which to the scientists behind the study imply that everything on Titan and on its surface, just like on planet Earth, very likely came from within. But instead of volcanism, it was potentially formed in some other bizarre way. But intriguingly, this connects to another study, this time by Lauren Schurmeyer and her team, that made another important discovery in regards to what's probably hiding inside Titan as well. And this was actually based on observations from Titan, both from the Cassini mission and even by the Voyager probe before that. Here it was the discovery of something that was missing, impact craters. All of the craters on Titan seem to be hundreds of meters shallower than what we see on similar moons or what's expected from any object. And only 90 craters have been discovered so far. In contrast, objects like, for example, Ganymede contain thousands, if not millions. And to the scientists behind this paper, this actually implied that the surface of Titan must have an ability to relax and rebound after every impact because it seems to be made out of something very special. There seems to be a methane clathrate ice surface right underneath the atmosphere and the initial surface deposits. And this methane clathrate ice is basically a mixture of water ice with methane gas that form a bizarre structure that contain water crystals and methane molecules inside of them. And this ice is usually stronger and a lot more insulating than regular water ice, but also seems to be very malleable and basically acts as a kind of a, almost like a clay-like surface, where anything that hits Titan usually causes the crater to close up pretty quickly, forming these bizarre ice deposits on the surface. But because it's so insulating, it very likely causes the interior of Titan to be much warmer than we actually thought. And so not only does it produce shallow craters or even no craters, it also makes everything inside much warmer. In some sense, it actually kind of acts like glaciers on Earth, but with even more insulating properties. And that basically implies that the internal structure is very likely warm, also very malleable and very mobile, and is not cold and rigid as previously believed. Which also very likely suggests some kind of a convection inside Titan, mostly due to the heat circulation and the differences between the surface and the internal structure, while also explaining where some of this methane potentially comes from. It does seem to come from these ices as they break, which then replenishes the atmosphere even more, while also contributing to the constant carbon cycle and even changing climate on the surface. So in other words, Titan is a really bizarre object, much stranger than we thought, different from anything else we've seen so far, and definitely requires a mission to basically go and find out what's on the surface. Now luckily for us, we have at least one mission that's going to be happening really soon, the Dragonfly mission that you can learn about in one of the videos in the description. But apart from this unusual helicopter, researchers have already started planning additional missions. And here's one of the more stranger ones, a walking balloon. Intriguingly, this would work super well, assuming it's actually made. This would be literally a floating balloon with tiny suspended legs, with each of them containing various sensors, where this balloon would provide buoyancy, the legs would provide all of the scientific data, and this whole mission would be able to actually sustain itself for a very, very long time. If completed, this would be known as ballet, balloon locomotion for extreme terrain. But because this is just a concept now, it's unlikely to become a reality for at least another 10 years. But since this mission happened exactly 20 years ago and allowed us to discover so much about Titan, waiting 10 more years is maybe not such a big deal. Anyway, on that note, once we find out something else about Titan or once there are more updates about the mission, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, check out previous discoveries in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the show on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.